five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And I sing. Hello, everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, coming to you from New York City. And we'll be here until midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen, Lake Oswego is in Oregon. Oregon is in the United States, and the United States is the most infected country in the world. Uh... This is Brazil Ronnie Bennett. Seems to be about to catch up with us. <laughs> yes, this is Ronnie Bennett. Uh, who's ca- catching up with us? Brazil is like really just. They say they're two weeks away from their peak, and they're just you know, and and you've got a guy down there who says, oh, it's just no worse than the normal flu, you know. Oh, what does that sound like? <laughs> His best friend, Donald yes. Trump. Yeah. 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 So I mean, you know, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, it, it, I I think that I think we've seen what lack of leadership can do in something like this. You know, we didn't expect this, but lack of leadership has just really let this thing float. Well, I don't. I I may not have heard you right, but it sounded like you thought our president before. The virus. No, 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 no. I, I'm saying this is what lack of leadership gets you. Okay, you know, of course he hasn't been a leader at all, but he hasn't been put in a position where he had to be tested like this, and now everybody can see that he does nothing except his his hardcore people who are out there, you know, with their guns and everything at state capitals saying, "I demand the right to be free and be able to leave my house." Yeah, give somebody else the flu, you know. Um, I don't it, understand. It, it's it's a crazy dystopian world we're living in right now. You know, fancy word, okay. Yeah, fancy word, but dystopian nonetheless. I mean, it's just it's amazing. This is all the science fiction movies I ever saw about a uh, you know about <laughs> a disease and you know wiping out the rest of the world and all that's left is this one guy played by Charlton Heston. You know, I mean. It's it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> so it is. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's not ridiculous. It's really awful. Just awful. Yeah. Um, that, uh, you know, my neighbor did a wonderful thing for me. Um, she called me day before yesterday and said, how about if I cook and bring dinner to your house on Monday, on the holiday? And so we did that. And sat across the table, long way from each other, mm-hmm. and had a terrific meal, and talked about a lot of this stuff. And um, and it's pretty awful. It's just, I mean, the the photographs from the weekend or the video of you know hundreds of people crammed together inside a small pool here and there. You know, what are they thinking? I I mean, it leads you to want to say they deserve to die, and that's not a good thing to be saying. Well. Um, you know, here's a thought I had is that the people who are protesting this, this the most are Trump supporters. They're, they're the ones out there with the Trump signs going, I want to be free and leave my house. But by the way, here's my Trump sign. And I'm thinking Trump should want them to stay indoors. There's an election coming up. And maybe they'll all be dead, and that's how we're going to win the election. You know, see, you apparently are under the impression that he actually thinks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I don't think that he connects things in that way. Yeah, I but, don't think his brain does that. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I, mean, I saw those things of the people in the pool, but I also saw beaches and bars and things like that where... People were told, okay, go back to them, but be careful, social distance, and boom, they're just like you're going crazy. Oh, boy, you know. I wonder how much that has to do with you and me being old. That, you know, we, we're we slower, we're older, we don't need to go out partying or to clubs and uh, or apparently the beach. And, um, and, and it, that's true when you're older. 
when you're younger, you're just oh, so full of all this energy. And, and it must, the same time that they've been locked up, the same period of time that we have, must have been a lot like agony if you can't go out and go to your clubs or go to the places that you normally go to. And, yeah. uh, and it must be much harder when you're younger. And I don't know a solution for that. I think I part think of the hubris that they're living in is the fact that they're younger and their chances of getting this are less or of, of, of being killed by it are much less than ours. At our age, uh, we're, we're in the risk group. You more than me, actually, you know. Um, but we're in the risk group. So they, they go, oh, well, we can go out and party. It doesn't matter. But if I get it, I'm probably not, I'm probably not going to live through it, you know. I mean, uh, so I stay indoors. I, the outdoors, to me, it's scary. I'm thinking about going for a walk today because I've been tired all the time and my, lightheaded and so on. <coughs> and it's because I've been in so long, you know. And I'm thinking about going out today, and it scares me. What scares you? What scares me is not me. It's other people. I go out. I got the mask. I got the gloves, right? Uh, when I come back, uh, I, you know, wash my hands, wash the gloves, wash the mask. Uh, many times when I've been out for an extended period of time, I take a shower, you know, in order to make sure I'm clean. But... Uh, other people aren't doing that. I go out on the street, and there are people out there without masks. And a good, a lot of them. Uh, I mean, more than I would like to see. The other day, I did go out, and I came back within 10 minutes because I felt I was being barraged by people who were trying to give me this thing. You know, the only tool we have against this virus is distancing and masks. That's mm -hmm. all we've got. Yeah. That there is no other... Thing you can do to protect yourself or protect other people and yeah I think today we're going to hit that big magic number you know the hundred thousand yeah, deaths yeah um, we're number one we're number one um, and uh, and it's gonna and it, and it just goes so fast I heard I remember like Thursday or Friday last week hearing one of the MSNBC or CNN mm -hmm people, you know, hosts saying, well, within a, by the end of next week, we'll hit 100,000. And I remember thinking, no, by Monday or Tuesday, uh, if you're following the numbers, yeah. and here it is. And I, it, 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 there was the incredible New York Times front page, right. you know, right. about it. And it, it was stunning. I mean, not, not, the, I paid close attention to it some part, partly because Hey, I'm retired. I have time, you know, and unlike other people with kids and all of that. But how can you, how can you not have been stunned by that? And it's not like if you live in Omaha, you didn't know about it. It was all over the web. So if you know, if you're online, you would have seen that, the front cover of that newspaper. Um, and then they went out to what is that? I never heard of it before, but it sure got a lot of. Of play this weekend is it called Lake of the Ozarks? Or Lake something? of the Ozarks, yeah, yeah. We're crammed together, um, and 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 I I somebody was quoted somewhere online that was in one of those large groups um, asked about why she wasn't wearing a mask or keeping a distance, and she said something to the effect of, "Well, I leave it up to God." It, it, a mask well, did you hear? Did it, you hear about that, that that preacher who refused to close down his church because he had to preach to Bunch God because those, God yeah. was going to save us from this thing, and then he caught it and died. Mm -hmm, yeah, terrible. yeah, because he let all all these people in and, and they infected him, and in in, res, in respect to that, he dies. Okay, and they're all going. Well, he's with God now. Oh. You know. I. You know, with so many people dying in such a short period of time, it seems that we're not... We're, when do we mourn these people? I, I feel like we're, they're just, you know, they die and they they're go in, somewhere. They're, they're, and, yeah. and nobody pays any attention. Many times they can't be given the kind of burial they would have normally had because they can't have a, a bunch of people there when they're getting buried. No, that's true. Um, and 
and I don't mean them individually, but I mean the country as a whole. Did you watch last weekend mm -hmm. on Saturday the speech that former President Obama gave for graduates of the country? Yeah, yeah. I mean, compare that to what our current president is doing, which is mostly just tweeting nasty things about people he doesn't like. Um, and it doesn't, when, when I was watching him on that graduation speech, it was only five or six minutes long, mm -hmm. and it was so impressive, it wouldn't take much to do the same kind of speech about what we're all living through right now, this terrible thing, for a president to do that. Yeah, yeah. And he never goes anywhere near it. Because he's incapable of it. Exists, Ronnie, he is totally incapable of it. The man was born with an empathetic bypass. He has no empathy for anyone. He, he's incapable of giving that kind of speech. Um, you know, and, and he doesn't know how, he just doesn't know how to do it. You know, there's an old saying that I used to hear was, if you can't be sincere, at least fake it. He can't even fake it. He has the inability to fake sincerity. I had a long conversation with a friend over the weekend, a New York friend, um, who sees him as evil. And I've never put a lot of thought to the word evil. I mean, mostly if you talk about people, that there are people who are evil, yeah. mostly what comes to mind for our generation is Hitler, yeah. Mussolini, pe right. Paul Pot, people like that. Right. Um, but he was insistent, and he had on the tip of his tongue the whole litany of the really awful things, not that he's said, but that he's done or made to happen. Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking about that ever since, mm -hmm. about labeling someone as evil. That person is evil. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a huge reluctance to do that, even someone I dislike as much as the president. But, you know, the more I think about it, the more I'm becoming convinced. <laughs> ah, boy. You know, I mean, I think, uh, I, I think the guy lacks empathy. He lacks leadership. He really doesn't know how to lead. You know, he doesn't know. It's bigger than those little attributes. It's a much bigger problem than that from him. But if we at least got that out of him, we would be in slightly better shape than we are right now. I mean, uh, I was never a big fan of Mario of Andrew Cuomo, but he I've I've gotten to like him because of the leadership he took in this state, in which he every day went on the air and gave a pep talk about why you wear masks and we've got to do this. He and if we're, win. it's not past tense, he well, still does it. Well, well, he still does it. I'm saying, but he goes he, he's gone on the air all this time. And I think by his force of, of, of speaking and by encouraging, uh, he's managed to bring this number down. I mean, mm -hmm. it, he's done it himself. Mm -hmm. And that's something, well, the pre any, if, if he were president, he would have done to New Yorkers for going along with it. What? You have to give credit oh, well, to he, New Oh, well, he gives credit to New Yorkers. He, he gives a pep talk about New Yorkers, and that's why we're doing this. And look what we've done. Look at how high it was. Look how low it's now getting. Let's keep it there. Let's not take our foot off the pedal, you know. But he gives this speech every day, and most New Yorkers are watching it because it's a great pep talk. And It's really interesting to not be a New Yorker anymore and listen to New Yorkers talk about their place and their governor and their situation as though the rest of the country doesn't know about it. It's very funny to listen to. Them. Well, I mean, uh, you remember that great New Yorker cover? Uh, I think you had that, that uh, poster on your wall, and I certainly had it on mine, where you've got uh, the, the Hudson River, or rather you've got the St. Was it the Hudson no, no, River? No, it just shows New York is huge yeah. and the rest of the country. Yeah, and then you got the Hudson River, and then all, California is like, it looks like it's almost a state over. I mean, that's yeah. the way New Yorkers perceive of the rest but of the see, world. But, but what I'm hearing from you is you've forgotten that. And so uh, we're all perfectly aware of what's going on in New York because you don't ever let us not be. Yeah. And, and it's not like it's just you. I mean, the whole 
Cuomo has become a hero to people all over the country. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Well, you know why? Because he is speaking in the voice they would like to hear from the president. Well, I mean, even if you don't have that particular thought, it's he's still useful and interesting. Yes. Yeah. But, um, but apparently to those people in the Ozarks, they haven't seen him. You know, they're out there just, oh, we're just going to have a lot of fun here. And yeah, you know, your death rate is going to go up. I'm sorry. You know? It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. You know, and it's not going to be over soon. I think this this particular virus. I mean, we'll we'll come up with a vaccine. That's for damn sure. But until we do that, this thing's going to be with us for quite a while. There was a terrific story in, and I'm not going to be able to tell you, but one of the big newspapers, Times, Post, Guardian, something like that, a few yeah, days ago. Yeah that did the history of the polio virus. And I remember, and I'm sure you do very clearly, mm -hmm. when we all went, everybody in America went to your local school and got a sugar cube with the, with the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Mid, in the late 50s, we all did that. It took more than 50 years to get a vaccine for polio. Yeah. More than 50 years. And most vaccines take years and decades to come about. And everybody thinks we're going to have one by fall? Well, um, we didn't have quite the science we have now. And we also, this is, a, this is an international quest. I think the, the number one candidate so far for vaccines is out of Oxford in England. Uh, it, it, you know, I think we are going to come up with one. But I don't think it's going to be tomorrow. I think that you're, you're sounding like Trump. You know, everything's well, going to be fine. All I said is that once we get a vaccine, maybe this thing, the, the, our lives can get back a little bit to normal. But until then, no. But it can't. Even if it were possible to get a vaccine that you could trust and was mm -hmm. useful, it worked that quickly. Oh, where are you going to get all those doses for the whole world? Well, supposedly, supposedly, I can't remember who's doing it right now, but the Oxford vaccine, they're making a bet that it's going to be the vaccine. And so they're already making s several million doses. Do you know how many people? Oh, are in I the know world? how many people are in the world. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and who gets it first? Yeah. But here, you know, the interesting thing about polio was. That there's a great documentary that I kept, and I watched it again the other day, uh, that was done on American Experience about the whole polio ap epidemic. And what caused it, what they finally figured out caused it, was our cleanliness, that we had cleaned up so much of the society. We cleaned up you know, health, get people to wash their hands, do all that, so much so that this disease, which was once an immunity you built up from childhood because of all the filth around you, no longer did that, and the disease was opportunistic. And that's what caused it. What caused it was cleanliness. I don't understand. It, because it, when, you're, when you don't have a clean society, people build up from childhood certain immunities to things stronger immunities to certain bugs and strains like that. And this bug could never grab hold because uh, some of the childhood diseases the kids would get and coughs and whatever gave them an immunity to polio. But once we cleaned up the society, we took the horse shit out of the streets and we, you know, we did a lot of cleaning up, it is, it, that, they say that's what caused it. And I've read this on several occasions, that it was our cleaning up that actually caused it. Uh, but, you know, and, you know, when you talk about the vaccine, how, how, how long it took to develop that, do you know how, how undifficult it was? That's, I don't know if that's a word, but how non-difficult it was to get tests on that? Because in those days, they didn't have to go through somebody saying, okay, you can go test it on people. They just went and tested it on people. They got a bunch of kids and tested it on them. In fact, some kids died when they tested it on them uh, because it turned out there was a lab in Berkeley, California that was making a bad batch. Uh, but anyway, once that was solved, we had a vaccine. 
And I love, I love. Uh, and you make it sound simple. It was more than fifty years. Well. More than fifty years of working on it. Yeah. So I don't, you know, and and most vaccines take decades. We still don't have a vaccine for SARS, and right. some of the others. Right. Um, and it's not for lack of trying. Yeah. God knows, but anyway, I do well. All I'm saying is if we either come up with a, a, uh, a vaccine or we come up with some cures that work and prevent the deaths from happening and people having to be intubated and so on, then we can kind of get on with our lives. Uh, but until then, uh, this is going to be with us. It's going to be with us big time. And I think that right now we haven't seen the beginning of the plague in America because of all these people jumping into the same pool in the Ozarks. You know, and people like that. You watch. There's going to be a spike in about two weeks, because that's how long it takes, that is going to be incredible. Everywhere except New York and maybe California. because in Cal And, and I think you're in, you guys have been pretty good about it, too, right? Well, there aren't so many people here, too. Yeah. I mean, it's a big deal. Like, if you look at Maine, yeah. you know, there's hardly any, hardly any patients, mm -hmm. that, you know. And, and ours is staying pretty low. It's been ticking up for a week, but very slow and very few. But there are a lot fewer people here. Mm -hmm. And, um, and well, it's a long political explanation, but not time for that right now. Yeah. Um, but it's doing, a lot of it is there's just, you know, in the whole state of Oregon doesn't begin to even have the same number of people as New York City. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, right. You know, um, uh, but I mean, what we, we've been impacted here very badly because we were the, as, as Cuomo has brought up so many times, we were looking towards China as where it was coming from, when really where it was going to come from was Europe. And in the three months that we did nothing, or the two, month and a half we did nothing about it, and the president didn't close down the European uh, travel, uh, there were approximately 3 million Europeans that came through New York City, many of them carrying the virus with them. And that's why we were so heavily impacted. Um, and uh, it w it's been scary. I mean, we've lived with a kind of fear I don't think the rest of the country has exactly appreciated. And it shows they didn't appreciate it because they're jumping into pools in the Ozarks. You know, we see a site like that, and we just, it's like a horror movie to us here in New York. So, yeah. Yes, well. Uh, you know, it, 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 we, we live in strange times, my dear. We live in strange times, you know. And uh, um, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I, I, I certainly don't think I'm going to see the end of it in my lifetime. I think we're still going to see this thing with us and perhaps some others coming along. And I hope we handle the, re the ones coming along better than we handled this one. A lot of that depends on who gets elected in November. Yeah. So how you feeling? I'm okay. She's okay. Yeah. Sticking in there, huh? Yeah. Getting by. Getting by. Getting by. That was very nice for somebody to come and give you lunch. I yeah, know, it's um. I've spent the last the holiday weekend mostly at home, except for that dinner with my neighbor. Um, quiet and at home mm -hmm. after. Um, I just need to to settle in, and try to find some acceptance of the latest information from my doctors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that takes quiet time and being alone and. You know, accepting it, and, and you don't do that just because you decide to. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? Exactly. Um, and maybe I'm coming along. It's going to take a bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've been a trooper so far, you know, and it can't. It hasn't. I'm sure it hasn't been easy for you. It well, you know, and now that with the pandemic, you know, it is. And unless I just don't wake up some morning, mm -hmm. I will, when it becomes too hard to live with these diseases, I will use Oregon's death with dignity law. Mm -hmm. And my friend who lives in New Jersey, who will take care of everything that has to be taken care of after I'm gone, mm -hmm. you know, we planned from my first diagnosis that she would be, she would come out here and be with me 
at the time that I do that. But no, she can't be getting on an airplane right. now. Right. It can't be done. Right. Um, so I and I wonder how many people. I mean, you know, that's a pretty, that's a, a pretty big deal thing to make that decision. Lots of people won't or can't. Yeah. And I wonder how many other situations people in the country or in various ones are in that the pandemic, besides being, you know, a pain in the butt that mm -hmm. you can't go anywhere and do anything or hug a friend, <laughs> you know, and all of that, the awful yeah. things we're all going through. How many other situations like mine will be dramatically changed because of it? With that, um, with that, we we've run out of time. Oh dear. Okay. Oh, oh dear. But we we will do another one in a couple of weeks, and you know, let's hope the world is a better place to live in two weeks from now. Oh, do you really believe that? <laughs> Not in the least. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ronnie Bennett. You can find her at. TimeGoesBy.net. That's her blog. Read it. It's terrific. She's and she's a great writer too. Just a great writer. Thank I, you. I That's enjoy nice. her stuff. I'm a fan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. I wonder how long I'm going to keep doing this really depressing opening. <clears throat> we probably should have scenes of people in the Ozarks swimming and uh, close to each other. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got, a, I've got a frog in my throat. My throat has been, uh, I've been kind of hoarse today because of, uh, if I, if not viruses, of, of, of the allergies out there. It, it's uh, tomorrow out of uh, 12 it's going to be an 11.8, and all day long I've been having breathing problems and things. I mean, it's not, I have no temperature, uh, I'm not coughing, but I've got this, you know, this rough throat. Uh, so um, live with it. It's called allergies. Hey, that's the terrible part. You can't tell the difference between coronavirus and allergies that much, except you don't run a temperature with allergies, and I'm not running a temperature. Uh, <clears throat> Hmm. I'm just trying to <clears throat> get my th uh, throat cleared out here so I can, I can talk through the hour. Let's take a look at the map quickly before we go to the phones, uh, before we go to the Skype, actually. We don't go to the phones. Uh, look, uh, 5,589,628 people on the face of the earth have had the coronavirus, of which 350,453 have died. Okay, this United States number, I don't know how new it is because what it's saying is that we are at um, 98,913 deaths, but, but I saw it at something like uh, 99,215 on TV, so I don't know, and it's from the same source, which is John Hopkins University, see that up there? But anyway, we've had uh, 1,680,000 913. We're heading to the 100,000. We'll probably get there by tomorrow. Um, not that we're rooting for that to happen. It would be nice if it just stopped dead in its tracks. But apparently it's not going to because a lot of people are deciding to live dangerously. And, uh, you know, what a bunch of idiots. What a bunch of maroons is... Uh, let me see here. Let me get... Uh, i got to get a few things out of the way here now. Uh, 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 uh. 
Here, come here, come here. Oh God, I just hate this. I, I want to. I got to get this down to where I can uh, um, see what I got here and what I don't got here. There we go. Okay. All right. Now, where do I go from here? Let me see here. Let me get my first panel up and let's open up the Skype lines. <coughs> That's the next thing we're going to do. I'm just trying to clear my throat because I've, and I was thinking of turning on the air conditioner because it's warm in here, but I don't want to turn it on uh, unless it, you know, it, if it makes too much noise. Nah, that's a problem. Nah, that's a problem. Uh, let me see here. Uh, we're, we're open for business here. Okay, fine. Now let's see if anybody calls. That would be nice. <coughs> hmm. I'm trying to just get rid of all this gunk in my throat. Well, here we go. Here comes Charlie Wallace. I think he was on the first page the other day. And so was Brian Neary. Uh, he was on the first page the other day as well. So I think, wasn't he? Uh, Brian, you there? Brian, Charlie, are you there? Are we, uh, 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 Phil, are you there? Charlie, who's there? Brian, you're there. And Charlie, you're I'm there. there. Okay. Charlie's down here. And uh, Phil is uh, we're bringing him in. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Brian, uh, I guess we'll put you in the first spot then. Well, it's just because he, he wasn't there before. Let me see here. Here comes, uh, let me see here. Phil, uh, where, where is it? Num oh, here we got to go. Uh, Jeff Zeller. I don't know where he was last time. Uh, he, was he in the, who was it? Who's in the number two spot last time? Oh, last time was Brian Neary in the number two spot. So now we'll put uh, Phil in the number three, uh, two spot rather. There we go. Now let me go over here. And then I go to the six spots. And in number four, uh, I put in, uh, let me see here, Jeff. There we go. There we go. Is that it? Okay, let me see here. Uh, there we go. We got Jeff. All right. There, that's our starting panel. That's a starter panel. <clears throat> How are you this evening, folks? Good. Good old. Yeah. I'm trying to, uh, what, what do you do for, uh, for uh, uh, rough, you know, throat where you've got kind of laryngitis? Suck lemons. <laughs> mm. <laughs> lemons might be the idea. I also have these. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm having, I got to get all the way over here. There we go. Halls. By the way, I found a way to help with the, uh, with the, uh, um, with the allergies. And I didn't realize that this worked, but I went, on, went online and it said, what to do if you've got allergies, okay? And you're suffering from them. And they said, use this. Ah, yeah. And, and that, will, that will help you with pollen allergies because, you know, and I put it on for a couple of hours and at least while I had it on, I was, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't um, feeling as, uh, shall we say, congested from the, uh, from the allergies. But we exhale, huh? we exhale carbon dioxide. Yeah. And yeah. so if you're wearing a mask and you're exhaling carbon dioxide through your mouth and nose, uh, aren't you then inhaling carbon dioxide, which makes you, your brain think that you're not getting enough oxygen? No. No, it doesn't work that way. Doesn't oh, work yeah, that way. it does. I'm a scuba diver. I know. No, what yeah, no, 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 but, you but, but, but you're not a doctor, and you don't wear one of these things. That's Th these, not airtight. these right. are not airtight. You know, really, uh, getting the carbon monoxide dioxide thinks that you need oxygen. You're, you we're not scuba diving, Phil. Well, you should be. Well, wait it's a minute. Just go through the filter. Oh, go through the filter. Stick a stick a go through the filter. I, I, you know, I, I, I go out on the street. And hold on a second. I, I, you got to get this off and get my earphones off, too, at this on. <laughs> keep, oh, look at this. I'm all tangled up now in earphones and face masks and whatever. But I went out and I got myself another face mask that I feel probably... Um, works better than that because it, it has been working for centuries. Uh, here we go. Let me see here. Huh? 
No. No, here we go. Yeah. on you. Huh? It's good. It's By the great. way, this lights up, but I don't want to light it up, so I'm, I'll put it back there. Yeah. This is what they used to call in uh, ancient times the beak. This was during the uh, plague. They wore the beak. And what they did is on the end of this, they put like, oh, I don't know, ammonia or some kind of salts to keep the stench out. And then they went around. They thought this would make them in better shape. Okay? Was yeah. gone was outside? Was just... Huh? Was what? Have gone outside with that yet? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Was that left over from San Francisco, or what? No, no, I was sent away for this. But Albert got one, so I had to have one. <laughs> so, there we are. That's the, that, they called it the beak. That was what they called it in the, in the days of the plague. Uh, the beak. So, oh, boy, that's hot. Woo! Anyway. It's hot here, too. Anyway, is it hot where you are? Yeah, I heard uh, Bubbles said it was hot today. Yeah, right now it's 90 degrees. degrees. It's what? Over 90 degrees in San Jose today. Really? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's getting hot here. Uh, I don't know whether to turn on the air conditioner or not. Let's see if it... If we turn on, make sure it doesn't give me too much noise. Okay? Hold on. Everybody, talk to each other. I'm, I'm going to turn mine on, which will give you a lot of noise. <laughs> Let's see if he hears it. There we go. Okay. All right. I just have to make sure it doesn't blow a fuse. Yeah. But can you uh, can you hear that, guys? Yeah. No, not really. Okay. Well, then I'll I'll let it cool me. Anyway. Uh, can you hear mine? Huh? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, oh, that was the first sound effect I learned how to do. Fire. Yeah. You know, uh, what is it? They take uh, the old film and they crinkle it up, and that's supposed to be bacon? Is uh, it? What, what is it? Old, old film? Yeah, like uh, celluloid film. You know, the, celluloid you know. film didn't have a sound to it. Yeah, it does if you crinkle it. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Only if it's bad celluloid film. Otherwise, it just bends. They did it at NBC Studios when I was like five or six years old. I was on the tour. Oh, what did uh, they know? Yeah. <laughs> they said, this is how it's done. Really? <clears throat> well, I remembered that from something I read on sound effects. And, you know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was cool. It was cool. <clears throat> anyway, how was the weekend for all of you people? Oh, no. Interesting. What? I I got to see my kids. Oh, really? How did you get to see your kids? Well, we went over to their houses. Uh, one group one day and the next day to another group. And uh, we wore masks. We were outside. We were probably about 10 feet away. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was a nice day. So, uh, that, that's pretty safe, it was, isn't it? It was, good. it was a good time. Dr. Brian, would you agree that that was safe practice? You sure you weren't at a pool party? <laughs> oh, that pool party. Uh, oh, jeez. <laughs> was that scary or what? Very bad. Yeah. That, those guys, you see all those tables in there. Those guys are all peeing in there, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> was that? Uh, what, what part of the country? The Ozarks. Oh. Those are in we, Arkansas. They know how to party. Yeah, right. Well, you know, they're taking our president's lead. You yeah. know, he's setting a fine example for the rest of them. Two weeks, a bunch of them. You, you know what? You know what Trump hasn't figured out yet? And this is how stupid the man is. That by giving this advice to his acolytes, it will kill them. And then there will be nobody to vote for him. <laughs> But well, one thing I don't understand is why why doesn't somebody in his party stand up to him and tell him how to get so many chances to say the right stuff and to do the right things like you were telling Ronnie about, you know, you said that he's incapable. But man, he's had chances to just shut up and say stuff that somebody has scripted for him and he would be in such a better shape. It, it, seem, it, it seems to me he doesn't listen to his people is what he doesn't do. Yes, Phil. 
Uh, did you hear his speech uh, at the um, uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier? No, but it, did he read it as badly as he normally reads speeches? No, he was wonderful. It was uh, the best, the best oration. Wait a, minute, wait a minute, I saw that speech. It sucked. <laughs> That's because you didn't like the guy giving. No, the I, he can't read. He, he wasn't, can't it was, read. Was, it was really well done. It was uh, uh, uplifting. In I, fact, there was one point at which he went off script and emphasized something and did it so badly. I can't I remember what it was exactly. Off. Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. I, it was a beautiful tomb. Wonderful tomb. Nah, yeah, very he, beautiful tomb. Yeah, but, the best uh, tomb in the world. The tomb. No country has a tomb like this tomb. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, except for the one in France and the one in England and the one in Spain. <laughs> Best tomb in the world. Um, well, you know, he's in, he's in a lot of trouble, Trump, right now, with his own party. They're, they're kind of turning on him. And Coulter has completely turned on him. And Coulter turned on him a while back. Yeah, but she's really going after him now. Yeah, she needs to sell more books. She's basically calling him a moron. Well, no, you loved her when she was on your side. <laughs> yeah. She was fine with you I, when she was I, on your side. I liked her because she had long legs and blonde hair. That's yeah. that's why I love her. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, 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 not, not good, not good. Uh, let me see here. i got to get Tony in here. Otherwise, Tony will never talk oh, to me there again. There go. There you go, Tony. There you go, Tony. I, you know, man. Mm hmm. Let me see here. Wait a minute. I don't see you yet up here. What, oh, what, no. No. Huh. Oh, there it is. Wait a minute. Webhead? There we go. That's Spidey. Yeah, that's, that's Spidey. Me. Yeah, Webhead. That's his nickname, Webhead. <laughs> oh, is 70s. it? Is that Spidey? In the edits, it's called Webhead. Yeah. I might have known it. As long as it's not a Scooby Doo reference, I'm okay. All right. <laughs> I told Chuck I didn't want to name one of my dogs. If I ever got a boy dog, I was give, I would have named it Scooby, but that would have been over the top. Should have named it Alex. You know what I was thinking of? <laughs> I'm going to adopt a dog. It's going to be a surprise for my mom. Mm -hmm. I was actually, you know what was a good nickname, and I'm not joking about this. I told this to Chuck a while ago. I like the nickname Bolo for a boy. That was unique, your nickname. Remember you well, said they had that nickname? It, well, it, yeah, it was, it, it was unique in that I never knew anybody else that was called Bolo. Yeah, it's unique. <clears throat> you that but said that. It was uh, the Little nickname. Time. It was the nickname for my uncle, whose name was Boleslav. And then you remember saying, I kind of like, you know, family names like that when you don't really hear something. Yeah, well, but I would, I, my parents that. didn't want us. They, the reason they nicknamed me Bolo was that you, in the Jewish religion, you name people after dead relatives. It's a very really? upbeat, very upbeat idea. Alex, the Italians named the sons after the father. I'm, I'm not joking about that. Well, one of my, well let's see. Andrew like, Cuomo was named after his grandfather. His okay, grandfather, okay. Yeah. Usually it's my, oh, yeah, my grand, I'm named after my grandfather. He was Anthony. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, uh, that's true. But anyway. Did your parents, did your parents send you to school in a, one of those bolo ties? Oh, those excuse me, to me. Ties, and you mean? How to fight your way out of <laughs> lunch hour? Hmm? Just pay him off. It's easier. I'm not going to answer that. Give him a Twinkie. <laughs> Look the other way. Cuomo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, um, 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 they, they named, but they didn't, weren't going to name me that because, uh, and he was the only dead relative we had. You know, we were, most of my relatives were living forever. They're vampires. Uh, but uh, in the case of these, uh, they, they named me after him, but they couldn't name me after him because they didn't want to strap me with the name Boleslav. It's a long name, yeah. Yeah, and it's a little, you know, it's a little too uh, old country. So they okay. named me. They named me Bennett, actually, uh, a very anglicized name, not named after anybody in my family. And they nicknamed me Bolo to keep the kind of the tradition going. And until I was maybe eight years old, I thought my name was Bolo. I didn't know it was Bennett. You know, because yeah, so you always had the name. So huh? Comrade Boleslav. No, wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't a Russian so, name. Sounds yeah. close enough. So Russian or Czechoslovakian? Something. It 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 was it's Slavic. There's no question about that. You know. You know, comrade is just Russian for friend. Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong you with know, that, Phil? What's funny? What's funny is my mother knew these real Italians. They were like 
So we used to once in a while go over the house for the birthday parties, and no joke, they used to say John, and all the Johns would stand up because they all had to name their sons, the first one, after the grandfather. I said, Ma, that's so stupid. She said, but you were named after, yeah, but they only did it twice. My brother wasn't named, you know, she just went off the, we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. Well, he was old anyway, so they promised he had passed away, my grandfather, so they, they did it like that. But when we went, they named John, they all stood up like three of them. I was like, oh, my God, this is like a joke, I said. <laughs> Uh, anyway, where I was going with my discussion here is, and you're probably quite aware of this, um, th there is a big move now to uh, perhaps ban Trump from Twitter. Can they do that? Uh, yes, they can. If you if you use Twitter for what they consider false and misleading, per Phil, don't put your hand up yet. Let me finish what I'm saying. You ready? Until you know what I'm going to say, how are you raising your hand? Because I know what Jack Dwyer said, and I'll wait. What did he your... say? Well, Jack, uh, there was a uh, a tweet that uh, Trump put out, and this woman uh, wanted him or uh, to take it down. It was about a dead <sighs> dead husband or dead wife, and uh, Jack Dwyer said he wasn't going to take it down. No, uh, they didn't so... say they weren't going to take it down. They said they're investigating it now, because the husband of the woman complained to Twitter that this was a wholly inappropriate thing and was a pure baseless rumor and that it did nothing but continue to hurt the family in a very harmful way. Twitter issued a public apology to the family. Well, let me tell you what the story is to begin with. Mm -hmm. I, I had this story years ago. I used to mention it all the time on the you air. You said that, Austin. Well, I used to that. say, when they, they'd say, so Joe Scarborough said this or that. I said, oh, you mean the guy with the dead intern? You know, Did he I really mean, kill her? No, no, he didn't kill her. He wasn't, oh, okay. even, he wasn't even in the office at the time. Uh, yeah. She had been out jogging or something like that, had a, what the, what the medical authorities believe was a, uh, a heart attack or something to that effect, and uh, then fell and bumped her head on a, on a table. And when they came and found her, she was, uh, I think they got her to the hospital and she died at the hospital. But there was nothing suspicious about it. Nothing. If she had an undiagnosed heart. Issue, what uh, Trump, in many of, in one of his tweets, intimated is that Scarborough was having a relationship with her, and she was married at the time. Okay, and then uh, continued to say that uh, he is still to this day being investigated as the prime suspect in her death. Yeah. And the the husband. Uh, wrote to uh, Twitter and said, uh, I, uh, I really wish you would uh, stop putting his uh, post, his tweets online because he takes, he, he does things that if somebody else did, if Alex Jones did this on Twitter, they would throw him off Twitter, which they did, yeah, okay? But they won't throw Donald Trump off. And they're saying now that they apologize and later Tuesday, Twitter for the first time added labels to two Trump tweets that included misinformation about voter fraud, directing the president's 80 million followers to get the facts about the president's false claims. The company did not take a similar action against Trump's tweets about the death of the intern. Um, but this is something that uh, uh, the, the husband is asking for it, and Mika Brzezinski got a hold of, of Twitter and got a hold of the president and said, you should not allow him on Twitter. He is always sending across false information, and this is a piece of false information which was very hurtful to her family. How do you feel about that, Phil? Well, when Mika comes up missing... Oh, now you see... I'm not asking you to pull a joke, Phil. I asked you a very straight, straight question, and I'd like a straight answer. How do you feel about him going after this dead woman? Uh... I think there's other fish to fry, and uh, why can't you, know, you just say Trump was wrong? Well, because he, a lot of his Democrat and a lot of his Republican pals are saying you were wrong this time, pal. Well, I don't know the 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 truth in this intern. Maybe he was right, uh, but you know. And on the other hand, what do you mean? Me what do you mean? Maybe he was right. He was wrong, Phil. Was wrong. This wasn't the determination of an investigation. Neither was the Mueller report. Phil, but, Phil, you're, you, you know, you're, you, rather than say, hey, you know, he really screwed up this time and he really should apologize. I, 
I just think that there should be a new filter on Facebook and Twitter called the love filter. And that if it doesn't meet the the love uh, and and kindness uh, thing, then they help should me. filter it help out. Help me, God, help me. Yeah, they should just filter it out. This man is out, driving then... me crazy. Yeah. I I love everybody. I love them. You know, but, but, that's Trump, true. Wait a minute. What Trump, gonna... said, Trump said, he said, oh, the, it, it seems suspicious and... I think the family would like to have closure and all this stuff. And the family doesn't want that. Family's already closed. Trump's the one that keeps bringing it up because he doesn't like Scarborough. Uh, well, he, I'm, trying, I'm trying to find the quote of the husband. Uh, 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 he said, we're deep. He said about the painful Later Tuesday at the same time. Blah, blah, blah. Tuesday, before Twitter, social media. I'm trying to remember, find what the, uh, what the husband wrote. But basically, he said, that you have no, the president has absolutely no right to do this. That he's not right to for the to do this to to her family and to her memory, and that right. it is wholly yeah, inappropriate and has brought up a lot of hurtful things regarding yeah. her death. You know, even if she was a public figure, I don't. She think wasn't that. a public figure. That's what I'm saying. It's not necessary to bring these things up. You know, mm -hmm. re regardless of how much he hates Scarborough and how much Scarborough hates him. You know, it, it's yeah, you're changing the subject, though, Phil. You're yeah, you're you're, you're saying, making this a fight between Scarborough and Trump. What you're doing is saying that Trump did something to get at Scarborough, which was very hurtful to the family that was involved. Um, yeah. uh, Twitter of, uh, uh, offered a public apology to the family of Lori Klaus. Uh, I can't pronounce her name, Klaus Sudis, whose death Trump has repeatedly weaponized to attack MSNBC host Joe Scarborough, but the social media company rejected a request from her widower, Timothy, to delete Trump's conspiracy-laden tweets accusing Scarborough of a debunked murder plot, saying Klaus Sotas <laughs> deserves better. Uh, yes. and, um, if they can ban Alex Jones uh, for stuff like that, they ought to ban that kind of talk uh, for everyone. From Donald Trump. Not just Donald Trump, but, you know, from Brian Neary. Uh, you know, they, they should ban it from everyone. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, yes, it's a publicly traded company, but they have the ability, just like a newspaper doesn't put every article in, they have an editorial staff that reviews this stuff. Well, they you don't, know? no, what they do is they let the president get away with stuff they wouldn't let me get away with because he's the president of the United States. And that's not an excuse. That's no excuse for allowing it to happen. You know? Well, they let a lot of people get away with stuff, not just the president. Uh, no, what I'm saying is, is that I think it's time that they said uh, to Trump, you've been, you've been doing the same kind of thing as Alex Jones. You've been spreading okay. false and malicious rumors and without any basis and using your presidential bully pulpit to legitimize what you're saying. And w that just doesn't go on Twitter. We just don't allow that kind of thing. If you look at the Twitter terms of, uh, of, of use, uh, you will find things that he's violated numerous times in that term, those terms of use. Do you think there's any chance that maybe he knows something that we no, don't? No, he has no, access? absolutely so, not. Doesn't matter. Absolutely not. That, this story has been running around for years. And I used to no. just joke about it when I was talking about Scarborough. Oh, you mean the guy with the dead intern in his office? You know. And, and it was a quite a well-known story at the time. He was not in his office at the time. This is when he was a, uh, what is he, congressman? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, right. When he was a congressman down in Florida. And uh, it, was a, it was a fairly big story at the time. But nobody had any real suspicions about it because he wasn't even there. Yeah. Did, you, did you hear about Mary Jo Kopechny? Getting in Ted Kennedy's car, it's big news. Yeah, but we're almost 100,000 deaths, and that's not what the president should be talking about. I think Phil's starting to agree with you a little bit, Alex. But yeah, you know, there's so many <laughs> things going on, and he's doing the whole he's doing the whole you know look over here thingy and, and blasting this and trying to get in a Twitter war now. And here we go, 100,000. You know, when we were like at 40 or 50,000, he was saying, "Oh, it looks like we're going to beat the models. We're going to be well under 100,000." Well, yeah, and that was said a couple months ago. I started bringing that up, but now you know, we're going to hit over 150, maybe 200,000. Uh, they did beat the models, but uh, for the time. But you know, the the thing is, uh, Cuomo 
uh, is saying now that the, the models were wrong and that, No, what uh, he's saying. No, here's what he's saying. He's saying yeah. the models may have been right had we done nothing. Had we done nothing. Okay. This was a projection based on no action being taken at all. Am I right, Brian? <laughs> Yeah, and, and he even made the reference of that everybody did their thing. I think they were really surprised that people would go and shelter as much as they did. Yeah, and because people did, we today we had, you know what the death rate was in New York City now from coronavirus today? I think it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 82, something wow. like that. Yeah, of which, uh, of which, oh, wow. what? Oh, yeah, we've been under 100 for a couple of days now. Um so it was like, I think it's 82, and I think um, uh, it's only about 50 if you discount the nursing homes. That's pretty damn good. We were up around 800 at one point. Yeah, we were, that was scary. A day. Yeah, uh, I couldn't watch the news anymore. I was getting depressed with all the deaths. And the amount of people who were uh, put in the hospital, all of, this is all over the state. This isn't just, you know, in New York City. A uh, uh, number of people admitted for coronavirus uh, yesterday there's only 400 people in the state. At one point, that was up around two, two 3,000, something like that. So, I mean, we've really brought it down. And I think part of it's been due to the pep talks every day by, by, uh, by Cuomo, uh, who did his gubernatorial duties um, to the best of his abilities. You know, and he admits he made mistakes. Yeah. So you got your hand uh, up again. You sure. always have your hand up again. Why don't you just get a sign saying hand? <laughs> Please pick on me. I, <laughs> uh, so I went to Kaiser today. Uh, um, to get he's changing the subject. No, no, no. The CT scan and the bone scan. And where you had a park, you had to go past the uh, COVID testing area. Oh, shit. And, uh, the COVID testing area had nobody. Uh, oh, that's a good sign. This is bad for Brian. Uh, you know, there, there was <laughs> <This is done. laughs> no, no, no. What's happening is, is that they they can do, for instance, in New York City. I think they claim they can do what forty thousand a day now, some amazing amount, and they're only doing about five because people have to go and do it. You know, now I haven't gone and done it. Marjorie has to because she's going to have some procedure, and they want her to have it. Okay, so. Fine, uh, but I don't. I'm not getting it because they say all, uh, uh, the only people who can get it right now or should be getting it are people who have symptoms, or uh, are any one of the risk groups like firemen, policemen, got people who work in the subways and so on. Yes, Tony. I, my sister and brother are going to make my appointment for my uh, colonoscopy. Remember you said it when I turned 50. Mm -hmm. Alex, you think they'll make me take the uh, the test for that or no? They're going to set it up they, for me. They might, make, they might make you take the test. You know, they just want to be, it's because they want to be, they want to protect themselves. It's not they yeah, care yeah. about you and whether, you know, whether you're sick or not. Uh, yeah. In fact, they told, she talked to them today and they said, yeah, we want you to be able to get the test and then have your uh, procedure within three days of the test being taken. Oh. So that's, that's a small window because you got to wait for the test to come back, you know. So, That's not one of Brian's tests because he can have it in 45 minutes. Yeah. 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And if we don't do it in time, you get a free one. <laughs> yeah. hey, I was talking to a friend of mine tonight. He's 86, and he's getting a cataract surgery yeah. in, the, in the second eye. Yeah. And uh, they're making him take a uh, COVID-19 test. So he went in today, he told me. And he, and he got the test in the drive throughs down in San Diego. Yeah. And he says they didn't stick the swab up that far. He says it was about halfway up his nose. They didn't roll it around or anything. They just Ooh. stuck it up about halfway. And that was it. He didn't hear it go clank when it hit the brain pan? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they, they didn't put it up that high. Yeah. I, maybe uh, they're cheating them. I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, but anyway, um, um, you know, I mean, it's... it's it, but, so the projections that they had were based upon people not doing what they should be doing. And people in New York responded because Cuomo went on the air every day and he gave speeches about, yeah, I'll get to you in a second, one second, Charlie, uh, it, speeches every day about how you should wear a mask. There's no shame in wearing a mask. Wear a mask and, and you know, and, and, and giving pep talks and getting people to, to toe the line. and and. New Yorkers responded to that. 
And that's why it went down. Why? That's why we didn't meet projections. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, it's, it's like when, when the Y2K thing came up. Uh, I've heard people say Y2K was no big deal after all. It just fizzled out. It didn't fizzle out. People like me worked their asses off to make sure it wouldn't destroy things on the, on the computer industry. Right. If we had done nothing, it would have been a catastrophe. Right. So you and did something, the and then they, then they said, what use was it doing all that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. But, but the fact is that, that uh, you know, it, 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 the reason why you, why you, um, why they stay, stayed down, why we didn't need as many beds as we needed, why we didn't overwhelm the hospital system in New York State was because we stayed indoors, because we hunkered down, because we did what we had to do. And we see the numbers. If you look at it, I mean, it's a slow slope down, but it, it came down constantly, never had an uh, up day constantly down now when we look at the rest of the country mm. it's getting a little depressing i mean when you saw some of those pictures from around the country you went well i hope they're all trump voters because they're going to be dead by the by election day you know yeah that, has, that, we that, said that just vote for me before you die oh, it, 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 uh, yeah, yeah send it uh, absentee like ballots absentee ballots <laughs> before you trying. die right no but i mean really i mean if, if he thinks he's influencing people to do something, he's influencing his people. The people are going to get out and vote for him. And if they wind up dying, he's not going to get the vote he thought he should get. And believe me, you take 100,000 out of the equation, and you got a lot of, you got a lot of votes there. Phil? Uh, <laughs> he, but he, he, they want to vote by mail. And there, and these uh, uh, postal employees are finding bundles and bundles of uh, of ballots. Uh -huh. Wait, where'd you hear that? Uh, I heard it today on uh, the news. What, what news? Uh, Fox. What news? What news? Yeah, what news? <laughs> listen to Fox. And so yeah, anyway, you know, uh, they had pictures of all of these ballots, and there's something called uh, uh, ballot mining or something where they send out people to people's homes that hadn't voted in the last four years, and they try to get them to sign up on these uh, mail-in ballots. Mm -hmm. And uh, they found uh, hundreds of votes in California and one other state, I think it was Texas, uh, that... Uh, you say hundred, to, did you say hundreds, Phil? Yeah. Oh, boy, that's a lot of votes. The guy, the, the that's guy going to turn the tide on any election. The Democrat that... In California... The Democrat that won in Texas won by 16 votes. Uh, I don't remember uh, his name. It was a Spanish name like Ramirez, Rodriguez, something, something, something like that. And uh, Texas doesn't have, you got to be over 65 to vote by mail in Texas. No, yes, they, they had these things. These people had been all, they had been dropped from the, uh, from the voting. Don't you love rock. listening to him? Go ahead. He he doesn't have facts, but he he'll remember what he remembered. Yeah, well, I remember what I was uh, shown on uh, Fox. On the news. Well, hey, I think that MSNBC is all BS uh, as well. Uh, I do too, but I but I don't use them as my. Uh, let me put it this way: I have out in my on my desk here my mail-in ballot. We we applied for it. Uh, I'm going to legitimately vote, and so are most people. They have found that in mail-in voting, they've found very little fraud over the years. In fact, less fraud in mail-in voting than what goes on at the polls. Yeah. It was good for 240 years, uh, you know, not well, having mail-in. No. It, 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 uh, I think you should be able to mail-in if you're... Uh, you no, know, you you're should be able to mail-in your vote rather than go to a polling place and wait in line or in this particular case, take your life in your hands. Yeah. Uh, this thing will be over a long before. Oh, over. yeah. Oh, yeah, Phil. Yeah, yeah, this right. uh, is, uh, do you buy that, Brian? Is that true? Is it going to be over before the, the election is going to happen? I have two new buildings I'm building. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going yeah. away. Well, apparently you're a believer. <laughs> People yeah, speak to me are making those decisions. So. <laughs> he hasn't called me for the floors. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you get that job. Forget it. You clean up. COVID's yeah. the best thing that ever happened to a glazy Not if it's for Brian. <laughs> we, have, we have Building One in Sunnyvale, and yeah. it's like Winchester Mystery House. These guys that have worked there on there, changing labs and moving stuff, like nonstop for 15 years since I've been there. 
So, yeah, we keep people employed pretty well. Yeah, so it ain't going to be over too, so, too soon, Phil, because to begin with, you're going to see in about another 14 days, you're going to see a real spike. We already have a spike. Uh, they, they say that the, uh, somebody was saying there's a second wave. It really isn't a second wave. It's the same old wave. It's just that all of a sudden certain people lost their minds and didn't follow the safety protocols, and now the states are starting to jump up. And the, feel, the feeling is that certain states, like Florida and, uh, and Georgia, have been lying and fudging the numbers because they don't want to look wrong. Yeah. Um, but that, uh, that uh, what is it, Alabama has gone, you know. And uh, already what they asked of the people who were at that pool party in, uh, in the Ozarks was that they voluntarily all quarantined themselves for 14 days. That's how afraid they are of what happened there. I think that uh, there wasn't enough policing of these things. And then they got these morons who were going, it's my right not to have to stay home. It's my right to be able to not have to distance. Or it's my right not to wear a mask. No, it's also my right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which I can't have when I'm six feet under because you were an inconsiderate asshole. So stay in your apartment. Hmm? You just got to stay in your apartment. I have to get out of here. I am, I, I am tired all the time. I'm lightheaded because I've ju I'm just, in, right? I've been stuck in here for, for, for 75 days. And it's, how, I, how I got to get out. I got to see some sunlight and I've got to get some exercise. This well, is just, you know. You took my mother out to Stu Leonard's. We had to get her out of the house. She was you know, we put the mask on her and everything. It was good for her last week. I mean, from, from Friday. Yeah. Just to get out. We went out to Long Island just to get. It was, you know, it was nice. They social distanced. There was nobody on top of you. Mm -hmm. You had to get out. It was like, oh, my God, we got out. We I, wonder, believe it. I wonder what you tell the cops, though, these days. So I got mugged. Yeah, what did he look like? Well, he was wearing a mask. Oh, yeah, that is true. <laughs> Don't even want to mug you now. Mugging's down. Yeah, uh, uh, um a lot of things are down, but somebody was making a joke about it. I can't remember who it was. I think it was Bill Maher who was saying it's kind of ridiculous because they say, um, you know, there have been no, there have been no, in the last 75 days, no traffic fatalities in New York City. Wow. Even None. though people are driving and, like and, and he said, what's no amazing driving. about that? Nobody was driving. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm noticing that people are driving like it's the uh, the uh, Daytona 500. Uh, they, you know, have you noticed that, Brian? That people yeah. are yeah, yeah. And uh, on the you know on those LED signs, they said there's something about if you have to drive, drive you know to the speed limit or something. Yeah, they're finding all these people that are driving 90. Yeah, I see it all the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's amazing, and and they're and they're all over the place. Where are they going to go? You know. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's closed. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm seeing a lot of me and my sister went to uh, the, the Navy. We my, went to a my sister and I. It took us only ten minutes from our house to Brooklyn to go to Wegmans. It would be never like that, Alex, in rush hour. It would take you like a half hour, forty oh. minutes. I'm seeing a lot of bicycles on the road. We're seeing. Yeah. People are biking a lot by us. Are they wearing masks? Well, some of them aren't. A lot of people aren't wearing masks over here. Yeah. Jeff had his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah. I ride my bike every day. Mm -hmm. Unless it's big. But uh, nobody around here cares. As, as long as if somebody's coming close, I get to the other side. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I yeah. had a homeless woman show up at my store today wanting to use the bathroom. And I said, you're not wearing a mask. You can't come in. I, uh, that, that, I had a guy the other day. Yeah, uh, in a moment, Charlie, I'll just let me just give this thought. I, I saw this guy on a street corner sitting there in a chair, uh, and he said, Have you got some money for it? Can you give me some money? And I looked at him and I said, Yeah, when you buy a mask with it. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of people without wear masks. I'm I'll, I'll tell that. you something, something mm -hmm. I noticed, and this, uh, uh, please do not take this in the wrong way. I'm not Joe Biden. Um, I went out the other day, and I decided I needed some fresh air. I was going to do, go take a walk. I made it about a half a block. I turned around and came back. I was frightened because everybody that was coming towards me wasn't wearing a mask. 
There's a lot. And the majority of them. Oh, and then I, I see Charlie has his hand up. I'm, and you can comment on this, Charlie. The majority of them were black. Of course, I live in a heavily black neighborhood, so that's uh, that's almost a given. But I'm wondering if the reason why a lot of black people are being the victims of this particular disease, disproportionately to the rest of the population, has something to do with a non-desire to wear masks because of something social. Am I, Charlie? What am I? Well, I, let me make my one point, and then I'll comment on that. Yeah. Uh, I saw a picture on Facebook today of uh, a Georgia Tech football game in 1918 during the epidemic. Mm -hmm. Uh, and every person in the stand was wearing a mask. Wow. That's right. That would never happen today. Mm -hmm. People are too selfish. They won't wear a fucking mask to save their people's lives. But yeah. they did in 1918. They realized that. And then by what Alex was saying, I think a lot of people were reluctant to w go outside wearing a mask because it was dangerous. Because you're mistaken for somebody, a criminal or something, and somebody might shoot you. Yeah, I, I just wanted to clarify what I had said before. Normally, what I would do if a homeless person came and said, I really need to use your bathroom, I actually let them use it, and then I have the warehouseman clean it. But this one, she was really dishe disheveled and no mask. And I said, look, I'm sorry, you know, uh, I can't let you in the store. I have a rule, you know, mask in the store. That's the rule. You can't come in. Yeah. And, and what if Trump came by? What if Trump came by to visit the carpet world? And, well, and he we, wasn't going. And, and he wouldn't wear a mask, Trump and he wanted to use him. your bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> he wouldn't want to use my bathroom. <laughs> he has his own on the uh, on the plane. Imagine he said, "Phil, there's no gold in the bathroom. I can't go." <laughs> but uh, yeah, normally, I mean, I've had some that they they shower in the sink, you know. But uh, what are you going to do? Guy asks you for help. You give them help, you give them some water, and you give them, you know, what you can, and you send them on their way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it, it was very nice of you, Phil. It was very nice. But, no, you were right to say no to her because, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, all, all we're saying about masks, and it, it is so true, is it's your respect for other people, you know? Look at Costco. Hmm? Uh, Costco, somebody came in, they were trying to get on YouTube or something, and uh, they uh, had a mask to get in, but they took the mask off, and when they were told to wear the mask, there was uh, an altercation, it was on his video thing, he posted it, but he came off like a real idiot. Well, because he was saying, I have a right to do this, whatever. well, to begin with, it's a, pl it's private, private. It's a private property. And they can make yeah. the rules about who's going to come in and who doesn't come in. And as long as it isn't based on um, racial or ethnic discrimination, uh, they have every right to say, you, you know, um, nobody's allowed in if they don't have a mask. And quite frankly, I don't want to go to Costco if nobody's wearing a mask. In fact, I don't want to go to Costco if they are wearing masks. I'll have somebody else go for me. You know. Yeah. When they first had the, uh, the, the uh, shelter in place, I went to Costco and there was a woman leaning against uh, a display, and she's coughing, not covering her mouth. And I, I, I went around, I got over to a Costco employee, and I said, hey, there's a woman over at the DeWalt uh, uh, stand, and she's coughing. Uh, you know, I mean, the spittle was coming out and uh, uh, uncontrollably. And I said, you know. Yeah, you told me this story. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Continue with it, though, in case people don't hear. She said, well, you got to tell a manager. I said, I told you, you tell the manager. You know, I said, I'm out of here. You know, and uh, <clears throat> very low watch. We have not a lot of people watching tonight. Uh, they all got COVID. I think it's Monday. It, it, well, the, it, no, it's oh, Tuesday. Yeah. And it, I know they think it's Monday. They, yeah. Well, they yeah, had a holiday like, this weekend. Either that or they're all dying of COVID right now. Because at the pool party. So. They were at the pool party. No, I mean, I saw that pool party. I it just scared the living daylights out of me. And, and then, you know, I mean, I saw pictures of the New Jersey boardwalk. And there are people walking down it without masks on, you know. There it was going. bars also that opened up. Uh, I don't remember if they were in Florida or Alabama, but they, these bars opened up, and these people, it was packed. Uh, there was absolutely no social distancing. It was just as if Did it you was. Did you hear about this one church that refused during the thing to close down because God is going to protect us all? 
And then the guy who was the preacher who stood up for having these people come in uh, died of COVID. 33 people were affected at that church. Yeah, but he died of it. And they were saying, well, God's still with us. Oh, yeah, what right. Been wrong letting he, he, there is a God. He got them. What would, have been, what would have been wrong letting them have their services in their parking lot? sitting In, in the immortal words of, uh, of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, who is this God person anyway? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, I was put up there. It's good. You know, what would have been the difference? You know, I, I mean, I don't go to church. Uh, I do protect them. But uh, I, you know, I don't see anything wrong with them sitting in the parking lot. And, uh, oh. you know, well, I think, you know, I mean, I, I saw one preacher who said, I'm not, you know, not going to open up. He said, I don't care if I have to go out of business. He said, I'm going to protect my people. I'm not going to put them in jeopardy uh, so I can get them to fill a plate. You know, and he said, I, I just don't believe in that. And uh, it, yet you've got these other assholes who go, oh, it's a constitutional right to have. Blah, 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 blah. Well, well, it is. Yes and no. I mean, if indeed it presents a health problem to the community, then you find another way. I mean, if you can't stay at home and get on your hands and knees and pray, then what kind of a religious person are you? You know? I, my do, you, do you need somebody to lead you in prayer? Are you that I, much I'm, of an idiot? belongs to one of the, you know, a church that is so um, stringent, it, it makes the Mormons uh, look like uh, Reformed Jews. And uh, so anyway, they pray every day, they're on the phone, they have a Zoom thing on Sundays, and uh, that, that's that's the way they do it. You know, the, the guy stands in front of a camera, yeah. and they get on Zoom. Well, I mean, that's the, that's the way to do it. There are, there are ways, or it's technology today it gives us the ability to do it. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, you know, I just don't, I don't I get these people with my rights are to, well, I'm sorry, there's, no, there's nothing in the Constitution that says that you have the right to endanger the rest of the community, you know? And it, it, we're simply asking you to do things which are going to help the community. I mean, where is the sense with all these people who are, you know, they, they, to begin with, they're protesting the stay-in-place orders by coming to the city hall or the, or the, or the state capitol with guns, you know, with AK-47s. What does that have to do with this, you know? Uh, she it, come down to talk to and by the way, they also all had Trump signs, too. Well, they're, all they're, too. they're pushing uh, their uh, other rights. Well, you know, you know, you know who is pushing what? them to go to those places and protest. Uh, it's not. It was Alex Jones. No, it was yes. uh, Melanie Morgan. No, uh, it, it, California. No, but, but but basically, it was it was Alex Jones who was ginning up the situation. Yeah, you, you know who Melanie Morgan is, yeah. right? Yeah, and uh, and she and Jack. Davis, I think, was her is her husband. Uh, he was the KGO. Well, anyway, uh, she has organized this, and uh, that's she's just in it. it. She's in it for the money. I don't think so. Oh yeah, uh, I, I don't think so. I, I, I think that she believes in what she's doing, but I don't think she promotes the AK-47s and the. Uh, well, you AR know, I mean, I just don't understand what that has to do with you know watching out for your fellow man. You know, I guess it press. I mean, it, 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 it's it's interesting that these people take this as a order that they have to stay indoors when it is a suggestion that you do it out of respect for your neighbor. You know, yep. oh, and 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 they can't understand that simple fact. They're taking people's licenses away if they want to try to make a living by cutting hair or opening up a floor covering store in Detroit. They're they're taking their licenses away. I agree with taking. I agree together. with taking their licenses away if they are not practicing s the safety measures that should oh, be taken to protect it, people. Safety measures in in Detroit and uh, Michigan. Uh, uh, the governor said that everything is closed. You can't even buy seeds to plant in your garden. And therefore, uh, if any and if anybody and some people have. Open their businesses, yeah. uh, some restaurants and some uh, uh, barber shops. Uh, they they mm -hmm. actually suspended or, or revoked their license. Uh, Charlie, Char Arizona. Charlie, Charlie has his hand up. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, there was a story in the paper today about uh, this 
this um, beauty shop in Houston that two uh, operators uh, tested positive and had exposed Clips. 140 customers. That was called Great Clips. I heard I heard about that. Shit. 140. That's why you can't <clears throat> just open up and defy orders because one person could could make a hundred people sick. That can go out and 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 make thousands more people sick. See, I'd agree with your philosophy, Phil. If we could trust the owners of these businesses to act in good in good practice, but we can't because you always have somebody who will let some two people slide by and cut hair who've got COVID. All right. It's unfortunate. Well, but, you say it's unfortunate, but how do we prevent that? We prevent that by clamping down, not by easing up. You know who? You just got to quarantine itself for a few weeks before she starts clipping heads. Yeah. Joe, Joe Pescopo, I think it is. Pescopo. A comedian. Uh, he he owns two gyms in New Jersey, and uh, I saw him being interviewed, and he said that you know his gyms, you can eat off the floor. They wipe everything down. They're practicing mm -hmm. social distancing. You know. Cool. Can't they open? Well, they can't open because to begin with, he's a right-wing asshole. <laughs> okay, that's, that dummy that's, that's for starters. I mean, that's why. It, and, and and to be honest with you, that's the only publicity he's gotten on TV in Did the last couple the of years. The babysitter that was watching the kids, mm -hmm. or something like that. I remember how he used to make fun of them. He yeah. dated the babysitter or something and left a wife. It was yeah, he crazy. did. He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I trust him with with the kids. Yes, yes, Jeff. <laughs> There's, there's so many things that are going on in, in every different uh, state. doesn't matter. Crazy things that just don't make any sense. But we're doing it. Okay. So I, I live here, and there's people playing golf there. So they said, at, at first, no golf. Everybody went absolutely ballistic and said, Playing golf is the most important thing in the world. Yeah, I mean, come on. These people are crazy. They just they don't know what to do. In its own cart, you know. Well, so the deal was. Oh, yeah, but did you see Trump? He was out there with some other guys, and he, was, he wasn't even fist bumping them. He was hugging them and patting them on the back. <laughs> He's making sure they died yeah. at the end of the yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I don't have look, 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 I, I don't have COVID, COVID because I took the the uh, chloroquinequin quin, quin stuff. Alex, he's going to be the one who carries it and gives it to everybody. Trump, yeah. he'll outlive everybody. Yeah, yeah. And he keeps wearing that white shirt. Why does he wear that white shirt when he's playing golf? It's slimming. Oh, it's hot. slimming. <laughs> it's hot out. Oh, come on, Phil. He dresses terrible. Yeah, black. Why do I wear black? <laughs> it's exactly. So, so the people in the show could have a rule. <laughs> Yeah. That says you have to have only one person in a cart. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the guys typically play four people together. Yeah. With four different carts now. Okay. Meanwhile, once they get off the cart and they get close to the end, then they're all slapping hands and all of them. <laughs> Just as much. I hope they get it. Yeah, it I really do hope they get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, that's they, probably yeah. What a bucket. You know, I mean, uh, I gotta hit that ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can't even hit it. They're not even. They can't even play golf. It's just a whole like we gotta act like we're macho and doing something. Do, they they're they, probably terrible players. Do only Republicans play golf? Is that the is that the? Uh, they're all they're the ones with small penises. <laughs> anyway. No, Trump, Trump's probably thing. like a Ted Knight. Remember Ted Knight in Caddyshack where he, he was cheating all the time and kicking the ball out of the rough? I can see Trump doing that too. <laughs> yeah. No, he's more like Eric, uh, Eric Goldfinger in, the, in Goldfinger where he, you know, he has somebody drop the ball somewhere for him. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, hey, uh, that's uh, that's the theme song. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for getting me through this. I didn't think I was up to it, but I'm a little lightheaded. But outside of that, I'm okay. I think I just have to get out of here. I think I just make been, sure you drink water. I've been. I be think this being home yeah. all the time is finally, you know. I, I actually got lightheaded on Sunday and had to sit down, and I didn't realize that I was dehydrated. I had a few bottles yeah. of uh, water, and it okay. made all the difference in the world. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. we're glad to hear that uh, nourishment report from you. Anyway, hey, listen, <laughs> that's it for tonight. Uh, it's nice of you to join me. I didn't know I was falling apart. That's my oldest joke in the world. Brian, thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, 
um, um, uh, Tony. And thank you, Charlie, as always, for being part of the Citizen Panel. You can always be counted on, especially yes. during this virus. Everybody, uh, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay? There they go, folks. There they go. Okay. That's our Citizen Panel for tonight. Uh, Jack Bishop will be assembling another Citizen Panel in the show that comes on right after ours on GabNet called The Intersection. In the meantime, I'll see you again, uh, what, tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>